Hi, uh, good morning to everyone. Um, 
my respect to wonderful heaven to Shanti, the abbot of this temple, for giving me this opportunity to uh, to do a short Dhamma talk about 15 minutes. So this is a sudden assigned work in, a, in absence of someone who, who is supposed to do this. But I think I will be able to cover most of the important part of the topic that is right livelihood or Samma Aji work. Uh, I will try to explain with reference to some, maybe like at least two suttas of the Sutta Pitaka. So for this, um, um, I'm especially thankful to other people also here, our community, and people who are online. Um, I'm sure everyone is familiar with the term right livelihood. It is one of the noble eight call path that is very important and the path to liberation. So I request everyone right now to pause for a moment and recall what you have learned, what you have studied on the topic right livelihood. Okay, so um, um, before studying the topic, I may ask a question maybe from Mr. Nams, kind of like, uh, what do you think about right livelihood? Okay, thank you very much. So, yeah, in in Buddhism, in Buddhism, we learn some like the factors of right livelihood. Uh, for an example, many people they know what is right livelihood. There are many factors that is. Uh, the first one I just say like um, that is actually included in a sutta called Vanicca Sutta in Anguttara Nikaya. It explains five kinds of right livelihood that is related to business. In that sutta, the first uh, type of right livelihood is avoiding or refraining from um, sutta. Vanija, that is um, selling and produce, producing and selling arms or weapons. Second one is refrain from uh, human trafficking, or we can use the term like a severe uh, exploitation of human beings. And the next one is uh, refraining from this, uh, doing business or selling animal, breeding animals and selling them for flesh. The next one is um, producing liquor, a kind of intoxication and selling them. The last one is uh, producing and selling poison, different kind of poison that is harmful to, we know like uh, a poison is harmful to everyone, to even to plants. So these are the five um, types of, you know, like uh, right livelihood that we are familiar with. And if uh, someone asks a uh, lay Buddhist or someone who is new in, in, in Buddhism, they will just take example of these five kind of businesses as a wrong livelihood. So like a person who is willing to lead a right livelihood there, avoid these five major businesses. But is it a Buddhist teaching? Is it a few Buddhist teaching? No, not necessarily because like, um, 
even non Buddhists they can understand these five kind of businesses are wrong and uh, not suitable for a person to live a peaceful life. So what is important in Buddhism? What really the right livelihood is? So we have to uh, examine what is right livelihood in Buddhism. Before um, focusing on this topic, I have to um, introduce or explain two important terms that is used in Buddhism. That is um, um, the duali dualistic views of the world. The first one is um, existence. The second one is non-existence. In the Kachana Gotha Sutra, it says the world is supported or cited by two dualist or uh, two worldly wrong views. First one is existence, and second one is non-existence. These two views, the first one. The views on existence falls under the spiritual eternalistic views. So this particular view helps to accumulate marriage and to live a um, luxurious life or to, to have a very uh, good life in the samsara. But the, the other uh, type of wrong view is um, materialistic annihilationist, annihilationistic view that leads to um, kind of wrong behavior. So therefore, Buddha, therefore Buddhism says that avoiding these two views, wrong views, helps us to go to the path, uh, to, to lead to the path of liberation. So here, the Buddhist right livelihood, I'll explain with reference to a sutta called Mahachattarisaka Sutta that is included in Majjhima Nikaya. And in order to have right livelihood, we must have right understanding. That's why in that sutta it says, Samaditi Upangama Koti. Samaditi is the forerunner. Samaditi means right view, right understanding. Is the forerunner of uh, right livelihood. So, what is right? Uh, why Samaditi is important in understanding right livelihood? Because Samaditi helps us to identify what is wrong livelihood and what is right livelihood. A person understanding wrong livelihood, the abandon wrong livelihood and start leading according to right livelihood. So here the right livelihood falls under a spiritual eternalistic view. It is still not pure Buddhistic. It does not uh, directly lead to liberation. So in order to lead to a liber uh, complete liberation, we have to develop white livelihood at the noble level. Okay? So what are the right livelihood preached in this sutta? Um, it says um, first I will discuss wrong, li wrong livelihood. There are four kinds of wrong livelihood. First one is Kuhana. This, uh, the second one is Lapana. The third one is actually a five. Uh, Kuhana is kind of you know like um, cunningness. Lapana is a nature of flattering. Uh, third one is Nemitikata, um, hinting. Next one is Nipesikata. There's also kind of cunningness. And, and the last one is 
लाभ है ना लाभ निधि पिंग से ना का यूजिंग सम काइंड ऑफ मटेरियल और यू नो एक टैक्टिक इन ऑल टू गेन मोर एंड मोर बेनिफिट्स आई वांट टू एक्सप्लेन दिस फाइव काइंड ऑफ लॉन्ग लाइवलीहुड इन डिटेल बिकॉज़ दिस फोर काइंड ऑफ लॉन्ग लाइवलीहुड must be understood as a buddhist in order to um uh, step on the right path towards liberation although these uh pali these five pali statements um explained in in english or translated into english may not give distinct meaning but when we read in pali we can understand we can see uh, the distinct meaning muhana means um we pretend something good that we have actually we don't have we pretend good something that we do not have on the other hand um we try to ascribe something bad characteristics that the that the other person does not have okay that means we for an example suppose someone is very good having good discipline but we talk about that person to other people that this person is very bad Okay, that is puhana, and lapana means flattering. This is this kind of uh, this nature or this kind of behavior is used to gain, to have more and more benefit. So, um, I will give good example for this. Suppose I know a person, someone. Who hold a political idea of one one side political idea, but I personally I don't like that political party or political idea. But in order to gain praise or some kind of gain, I approach him and really praise that particular political party I don't like because I have expectation I should gain material. things of praise from that person and the next one is nemitikata nemitikata means hinting or showing or pretending for an example um sometimes you will feel little bit uneasy but some... however we are trying when we see a someone who is capable of helping us we over pretend we behave uh in order that the person look at us and help us give us more donation and you know more support with expectation we pretend over acting that is called um name it kata showing you know, like a sign or bodily sign or kind of you know verbal sign you know to get something in return The next one is um, we face it at all. That means we are covering up our bad characteristics, and on the other hand, we are covering up the good characteristics of other. Other that person may be you know like someone related to us or someone you know like outsiders. we do we cover our own bad characteristics and cover the good characteristics of other you know to there is also kind of you know like a cunningness to get more and more benefits the last one is um we use some kind of you know material or you know like some kind of phrasing to get more and more benefits for an example i, I give like this um if a person receives a gift or a food okay the person overly praise the donor why is that 
here's the intention with a phrase, the person the food, I will, you know, next time I will get more and more food from that person. So these five kind of form livelihood are very you know subtle. It's in you know, like a very kind of you know, like um, Buddhistic. Okay. So these five kind of you know, uh, wrong livelihood covers all the five kind of businesses wrong wrong businesses wrong earning including the manager sutra. So um, therefore, one should not think that the about the I mean like the the affirmation five five kind of wrong livelihood or businesses are the only Buddhist way of right livelihood. No, there is not right. There is only partial right. Okay, but uh, the five kind of wrong livelihood I mentioned with reference to uh, the Mahatapparisata Sutta is what a Buddhist is expected to understand and to give out. Okay, so a person who has right understanding, he understand what is wrong livelihood. As I explained before, like Puhana, there is cunningness, and Lapana, flattering, Nemitikata, hinting, Pesikata, covering uh, one's own bad characteristics, and also covering the bad character, uh, good characteristics of someone in front of the audience, maybe. And also um, the last one is using the material gain or some kind of gift in order to uh, receive more and more, okay? And in the Mahachattarisaka, it says, when a person understands what is wrong livelihood, he leaves, he abandons the, the five kinds of wrong livelihood and step try to step onto a right livelihood that is avoiding those five kind of wrong livelihood that means a person uh, st stepping away from um, materialistic annihila annihilationistic view i will explain this what is what does this view means this a person who holds this view uh, thinks that this is my last. This is my first and last life. There is no life hereafter, and he, the person does not believe in the results of good and bad action. So that kind of person, you know, like may harm oneself and the other in the society, and they do not care what the people thinks. So they try to enjoy the utmost sensual pleasure. They they try to gratify their sensual pleasures utmost at any cost. So that is very dangerous than the other end, which is going to be explained, okay? And a person having right, uh, right understanding lives away from that kind of materialistic annihilationistic view or that is uh, from under which a wrong livelihood falls, okay? And after living away from the wrong, li uh, wrong livelihood, a person steps to the right livelihood. So uh, that means at this, at this stage, at, this is the stage, good side or merit side, punya side, okay? At this stage, the person has, you know, like uh, uh, understanding or accepting ethics or uh, let's say the you know, like a good discipline accepting what is good what is bad understanding what is helpful to oneself to others what is destru destruct you know uh, destructive to oneself and others at this stage the person is you know like um, um, having good ethics good behavior but he's still in the in one end of the dualistic views that is the view of uh, eternalistic uh view okay so this person believes in uh, results of good and bad action that's why this person you know do good you know in order to uh uh you know reap 
uh, accumulate uh, you know, like uh, gain benefits uh, in the future or maybe in the next life. And this is the punya expect or meritorious expect on the on the path to liberation. And this is actually the first stage. And in the Mahachattarisaka Sutta, this first stage is explained as um, you know, uh, at, as the right livelihood that is um, sasava uh, having you know, a kind of you know, like, um, defilement, punya bahagia, sided with merit, like result giving, and upadi vepakko. That means uh, leading towards rebirth or help producing, generating the energy of to lend, to lengthen the samsaric life, the to, to lengthen the uh, cycle of birth and death, but enjoying, you know, like uh, good results of good actions. Okay. So at this stage, the person has already left the wrong livelihood all the five kind of wrong livelihood I have mentioned according to the Mahachattara Saka Sutta and he's engaging now in the right livelihood. Um, so this is up to this stage, we are still in a dualistic view. That means we are not escaped, we are still not safe from the cycle of death and birth. Okay, in, in order to escape from the, you know, like uh, from this, uh, dualistic view, we have to understand, we have to step for, forward towards the um, path to liberation. So this, the, this stage or the second stage of the path is explained in the Mahachattari Saka Sutta as uh, the, the path that is noble, Arya, that is uh, undefiled, anasava, uh, lokuttara, transcending from the world, worldliness, that is leading to Nibbana, and uh, Magango, that is, you know, like uh, uh, the, the path factor to the liberation, okay? So, um, uh, at the first stage of right livelihood, the person only, you know, refrain, only refrain from five kind of wrong livelihood. But at the noble stage or the second stage of right livelihood, a person has already passed the dualistic view and now he's on the way towards the liberation, towards the path of Nibbana. So here, um, we, uh, we have to pay special attention to uh, few factors that is important to understand. The first one it says uh, arati, virati, uh, pativirati, and veramani. At this stage, the persons not only refraining from wrong livelihood, but a person stays away from wrong livelihood as well as people or individuals who are engaging in wrong livelihood, okay? So, arati means staying away from right, a wrong livelihood as well as staying away from people who are engaging in wrong livelihood. The second uh, stage is virati, means also staying away from wrong livelihood and from those who are uh, engaging or in like uh, leading a wrong livelihood. Not only staying away, but also refraining from the wrong livelihood. Pativirati, the next term related to the noble aspect of right livelihood is pativirati. That means a person um, stay away, refrain from wrong livelihood and those who lead a wrong livelihood. And also he 
prepare or he shows or he discusses the dislikes of wrong livelihood and people who are engaging in wrong livelihood that is party virating and the next one is where are money refraining so there are uh, these stages are important and is endowed these uh, behaviors are endowed by a noble person who has already stepped away from uh, the nature of papa that means as we say like we can use the english term sin but it's not actually it means and also who stays away from punya or meritorious side so the second stage or noble noble stage of right livelihood you know like is something related to kusala all so in buddhism uh the the term kusala is you know like explain very you know like uh, having you know like a distinct meaning that is the term we use uh, as energy that leads us to nibbana so um, uh i hope this explanation will be helpful for the people who have already you know who are already familiar with the buddhist teaching of right livelihood and wrong livelihood but this may find a little bit you know difficult and complex for those who are very new to uh to to buddhism so if you have any question we are happy to um, answer at our best and we have uh venerable heaven polashanti and we have mr caesar and mr nam and venerable vinita so we welcome your question thank you sadhu 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 well at, at first i have a request that can you repeat in english about five uh, uh, livelihood uh, rule oh that is in according to uh, you know the mahachatarisaka sutta or yeah, just in english oh, okay not to uh, sell the Okay. Okay. Oh, it's like that. Not selling the poison. Not yeah. selling the. Okay. Just five words. Say. Okay. In that sutta, it says. Yeah. In the Vanicca sutta, it uh, it says five kind of wrong business, wrong livelihood. That is, uh, selling web weapon, producing weapon, and also. Um, selling uh, you know, like uh, exploiting human beings or human trafficking and then you know like uh, breeding and selling animals for flesh and the next one is you know like um producing liquor and selling the next one is um producing poison and selling poison there is the five business actually there is business that is related to people who are doing business that is not purely you know like a true a uh, noble person or noble life thank you thank you very much yeah anyone who are uh, with us online can pour, uh, can ask question so we are happy to answer if you if you have anything to be clarified from buddhist you know like um uh, a uh, buddhist uh, right livelihood perspective or buddhist perspective on the right livelihood i'm happy to explain ahana ne de ahana ma de table kata kata ben ne computer ne ahana All right. So I have a question. Like yes. Uh for some of us uh who are um I'm normally a a teacher uh but because of the pandemic I have lost my job. Can you hear? Yes. Can hear? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I've lost my job because of the pandemic. Amaro, one second. We're getting some feedback. Just one moment. Uh, okay, we're going to fix it.
echo. Maybe you can mute everyone and just unmute one person. I shall never go to him. My airplane dollar came, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. It's okay. Uh, I'm uh, uh, normally a teacher, but, bec but because of the pandemic, I've lost my job. And I'm wondering, um, what does the Buddha teach about um, if, you, if you cannot find work, how do you practice uh, right livelihood? Can you make uh, the question specific? That's the question. Because like I cannot hear you know, like anything, and is it possible that you can type? Well, well, after the name, we will look ahead. Well, after that, no more question. He typed his question, Bante. Um, Maybe you can read the question and then answer it. Uh, okay okay so again buddhism does not advise us to go against the current situation and you know like we have to understand the current situation we have to accept the current situation and act accordingly with understanding with good understanding i can hear back my voice okay. so the only thing we can do is you know like uh, at this uh, situation because it's not it doesn't happen to a single person but it happens to every like almost everyone it's scary but um uh, it is our responsibility to stay safe and you know, like uh, to accept and understand the situation and live accordingly. That's the, my answer. So there is no magic in Buddhism. You know, like uh, to drive away darkness at once. Can I try to answer? Um, A teacher, 
Did you get an uh, answer for that? Is, is any more question? Right. Tom is trying to provide an answer, but we can't we hear figure him. Out the sound problem. If not, then we'll continue into it. A chat. Message type kara da question coming or not? I think no question. I, I have a question. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay. Uh, when you were speaking of right livelihood and staying away from people who are not practicing right livelihood, uh, it made me think of a colleague. Can you hear? Off. Is this better? Can you hear me better? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I should type it. Uh, okay, so I have a colleague that I work very closely with and I'm struggling with a lot of frustration because he does not, according to our, I'm a, I'm a union representative and he's not acting according to our, according to our, our mission. So, so is there anything in Buddhism that can help me to release the frustration besides the meditation or besides, is there anything in the suttas that can help? Were you able, able to hear? I will tape it. Uh, can can you repeat the question? The question is other than medi meditation, how mm -hmm. Buddhism can help release frustration okay. of losing a job or losing others or something like that. Okay, so many people think like um, the meditation is something like we have to be in solitary and you know like uh, it's something that uh, we have to be always in, but you know like. Um, Meditation is meaningful in our life when we have right understanding. When we have right understanding, wherever we are, we understand the situation and we, uh, we appreciate or we acknowledge the um, you know, like, uh, good and bad happening. So, um, you know, like loss and gain is part of our life. We have to accept that. That's it. And if you don't want to accept loss and uh, you know, like gain, like uh, that, uh, we can f we can uh, further step ahead. That is, you know, like uh, we have we must have noble understanding or noble right view, and then it helps us to get rid of worldly. You know, like experiences. She says she understands and thank you. All right, I think we have to chant in right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. we're going to chant in. Uh, the... no. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, this is the first time we, we have been like uh, hold, we have been holding um, Zoom, so we experienced technology issues. That's why you know like it happens. So how now this is the time to go for chanting sutras. So um, join with us. Thank you, everyone.
ಭಗವತ್ತು ಅರ್ಹತ ಸಂಬುಧಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ ಭಗವತ್ ಅರ್ಹತ ಸಂಬುಧಸ ನಮೋ ತಸ ಭಗವತ್ ಅರ್ಹತ ಸಂಬುಧಸ ಭಗವಾಂಬುಧ ವಿಜಾಚರಣ ಸಂಪನ್ನೋ ಸುಗತ ಲೋಕವಿದು ಪುರಿಸಾರಥಿ ಸತ್ತೇವ ಮನುಷ್ಯಬುಧ ಭಗವತಿ ಸ್ವಾಖಾತು ಭಗವತ ಸಂದಿಕೋ ಅಕಾಲಿಕೋ ಓಪನೈಕೋ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ತ ವೇದಿತೋ ವಿಜ್ಞೋಹೀತಿ ಸುಪತಿಪನ್ನೋ ಭಗವತ ಸಾವಕ ಸಂಗೋ ಉಚುಪತಿಪನ್ನೋ ಭಗವತ ಸಂಗೋಪತಿಪನ್ನೋ ಭಗವತ ಸಾವಕ ಸಂಗೋ ಸಾಮೀಚಿ ಪತಿಪನ್ನೋ ಸಾವಕ ಸಂಗೋ ಯದಿ ಚಾತ್ತಾರಿ ಪುರಿಸುಗಾನಿ ಅಥ ಪುರಿಸಪುಗಲ ಭಗವತ ಸಾವಕ ಸಂಗೋ ಆಹುನೆಯೋ ಪಾಹುನೆಯೋ ಅಂಜಲಿ ಕರಣೀಯೋ ಅನುತ್ತರ ಪುಣ್ಯಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಲೋಕಸಾತಿ ಮಂಗಳ ರಕ್ಷಂತ ಸಬ್ಬೇವತ ಸಬ್ಬುಧಾನುಭಾವಿ ಸದಾ ಸತಿ ಭೇ ಮಂಗಳ ರಕ್ಷಂತ ಸಬ್ಬೇವತ ಸಬ್ ನುಭಾವಿ ಸದಾ ಸತಿ ಭೇ ಸಬ್ಬ ಮಂಗಳ ರಕ್ಷಂತ ಸಬ್ಬ ದೇವತ ಸಬ್ಬ ನುಭಾವಿ ಸದಾ ಸತಿ ಭೇ ಿನ್ ಎ 
as there is no form, no sensation, perception, perception or consciousness, no idea, no stung body or mind, no false smell, taste, touch or dharma, no rank of sight till we come to no rank of consciousness. No ignorance and no ending of ignorance till we come to no all age and death. And no ending of all age and death. No suffering, origination, extinction or path, no wisdom and no attainment, nothing to attain. Because the Bodhisattva follows Prajna Paramita, the mind has no hindrance. Hindrance, there is no fear, and far from all fantasy, there is dwelling Nirvana. Because all Buddhas of the three tens follow Prajna Paramita in complete perfect enlightenment. Therefore, know that the Prajna Paramita is the great holy mantra, great bright mantra, the wisdom mantra, the unequal mantra, which can destroy all suffering, truly real and so he gave the Prajna Paramita mantra which goes Gati Gati Paragati Parasangati Bodhiswaham Gati Gati Paragati Parasangati Bodhiswaham Gati Gati Paragati Parasangati Bodhiswaham Numberless, I vow to save them all. Deluding passions are inexhaustible. I vow to end them all. Dharma gates are limitless. I vow to study them all. Buddha's way is supreme. I vow to attain it. May suffering ones be suffering free, and the fear struck fearless beam. May the grieving shed all grief, and the sick find health relief. Yeah. 
Thank you, Dr. Bhaktan Sara. Uh, thank you, Ashan. Thank you, Sisa. And thank you, Nam and everybody. Uh, this is the first time we try to do with uh, Zoom. There are some uh, kind of problem appear. So I hope next time we have more experience, <laughs> uh, we can do better than this time. So at least, you know, we try to do it. I believe it's, it's success to me. And thanks for the, all the people who joined with Zoom. Uh, and thanks of, again for all the members, our regular members. We miss everybody. So hope to see you next Sunday again and with a different speaker. I don't know right now who's going to speak next Sunday. We will announce earlier, maybe two, three days earlier, who is going to speak, what subject. Um, again, thank you all so much for being with us today. And stay safe, stay home, take care. And by the power of the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, you all be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Nice to see everyone. Goodbye. See you all next Sunday. You're muted, Victor. <laughs> <laughs>